I believe COVID-19 may have just issued the final and fatal blow to our private pensions, and here's why. In 2019, the average funded status of our pension plans was about 87%, meaning I owe you $100, but I only have 87 in my pocket. Only when it's pensions, we're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars. Now, this is important because in 2007, the average funded status of private pensions was reportedly 104%. How is it possible after a year of record returns in the stock market, our funding status on our pensions has actually gone bad? Well, to understand that, you have to understand the formulas involved in pensions. You have the asset side, which is the employer putting money in and investing that money and it earns money. You have the obligation side where actuaries come in and they took, take a look at all of the promised future payments to retirees. And then they discount that back to a lump sum number today using interest rates. Changes in interest rates greatly affect that number and it's an inverse relationship. As interest rates decrease, the funding liabilities increase. So if you take a look at the federal funds rate over the last decade, right before the last financial crisis, it was just under 6%. We experienced the financial crisis and it went near to zero for years and years and years, slowly starting to creep up again recently until, you guessed it, 2020 hit and it dropped nearly back to zero again. The decrease in interest rates over this decade have nearly washed out any potential benefit we got from a great market. If companies didn't like their private pension plans before, they definitely don't like them now. And to put all of this in context, the number of private companies offering a pension plan decreased by 80% in the last 20 years. Let's use a real life example. Let's talk about Delta Airlines. Back in 2016, it was reported that Delta Airlines was the second worst funded pension of all S&P 500 companies. And they took major steps in 27 to correct that. They actually, in addition to their regular funding, issued $2 billion worth of debt and then directed a billion and a half of what they raised to their pension in an effort to stay above water. In 2017, Delta Airlines reported a before-tax earnings of five and a half billion dollars. If you've been watching the news, Delta reported their Q2 earnings yesterday for 2020. And yes, about five and a half billion dollars negative prior to tax from this year because of COVID-19. If companies like Delta were having to issue debt in profitable years to fund their pension obligations, how can we expect them to fund their pension obligations during a global pandemic? This is a very real problem and we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it from a smaller company perspective because you probably need the most help right now. How do we de-risk our pension? How do we wind down? And if we've already frozen it or hard frozen it, how do we get to that point where we actually terminate it? How do we transfer this risk and the uncertainty of the liability and the variation of funding every year away from us? To the other side, what if you are a participant in a pension? What questions do you need to be asking yourself? Should I take a lump sum or should I not? What kind of payment stream can I rely on? What is the financial stability of the pension that I have been promised? This is a real topic. And we were seeing a decline in pension offerings already. And I think 2020 is going to be the straw that broke the camel's back. Stay tuned for more about defined benefit plans. This is Jeannie Fisher, the 401k lady.